Today we're going to be talking about probability. The pro and probability is the measure of how likely an event is to, ha to occur. Each probability result, each possible result of a probability experiment or situation is called an outcome. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. An event is an outcome or set of outcomes. So rolling a number cube or rolling a dice, okay, there's six possible outcomes, the numbers one through six. Spinning a spinner, in this case there's four possible outcomes, okay. We're going to be talking a lot about a deck of cards, okay. So you want to keep in mind that those are our sample space. There's two types of probability, theoretical versus experimental. Theoretical, we're going to be doing a lot of, and that's going to be using algebra to calculate. And experimental is looking at results from an experiment and looking at the probability that an event's going to happen. So theoretical probability is the probability of some event is the number of favorable outcomes, the number of basically true things versus the total amount of possible outcomes. So our first example, each letter of the word probable, probable is written on a separate card. The cards are to be placed face down and mixed up. What is the probability that a random selected card has a consonant? So how many total letters do we have in probable? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, okay, so that's my total amount, the number of outcomes in our sample space, but now I need to know the favorable outcomes. Basically, I need to know how many consonants there are. One, two, three, four, five. So our answer is five out of eight. Two number cubes are rolled, and I have a picture of all the different possibilities here. What is the probability that the difference between the two numbers is four? So the difference, when I subtract them, their difference is four. So how many total outcomes do I have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six by six. So there's 36 possible outcomes. Now, how many of them has the, has the difference being four? Five minus one. So let's go to 1 minus 5. 6 minus 2. 2 minus 6. Um, that's all that I see. So that is going to be 4 out of 36, which reduces to 1 out of 9. Okay, now experimental probability. You can estimate the probability of an event by using an experiment. And each repetition of the experiment is called a trial. The sample space of the experiment is the set of all possible outcomes. And the experimental probability of an event is the ratio of the number of times the event occurs, the frequency to the number of trials. So meaning, with experimental probability of the number of trials, that's the total amount in your sample space, and then the top is the number of times you got what happened is what you wanted to happen. Okay. So finding experimental probability. So what's our total? So the number one, two, three, four, five, what's our total number of times that this thing happened? When I add all these numbers together, I get 50. So our total number of times the experiment happened was 50. Spinning a four, well that's 14, because there was 14 times that we landed on four, so that's gonna be seven over 25. Okay, spinning a number greater than two. I don't know why I wrote 20 there, that should be a 50. So spinning a number greater than two. 3 is greater than 2, and 4 is greater than 2. So add those two together, we get 33 out of 50. So 
a little bit more challenging of some probabilities. Mutually exclusive. Events that can't occur at the same time. So mutually exclusive events. There, so if you think of a deck of cards, kings and queens are mutually exclusive. You can't have a king and a queen on one card unless it's a fake deck. Okay? Versus kings and spades, there is a king that's a spade. So that is not mutually exclusive. Okay? This is important. Please make sure you write this down. Two events are mutually exclusive. If they're mutually exclusive, their probabilities that A or B occurs, you just add the probability A and the probability of B. Okay? But if the events are not mutually exclusive, so the probability of A or B, you add the probability of A, you add the probability of B. Now, since the events are not mutually exclusive, you have to subtract the probability in A and B. Because if you think about it, you've added the probability of A and B twice because they're in both of the circles. If you look at this circle up here, is the probability of A. Okay, so the probability of A. And then spades is the probability of B. You've added this king that's a um, spade twice. So what you need to realize is you need to then subtract it so that you've only considered him once. Okay. First we need to determine whether it's mutually exclusive or not. Then we need to find the probability. So Nancy has a box of dog toys that contains eight squeaky toys, five plush toys, and two boats. If she selects a toy at random from the box to give to her dog, what is the probability that the plush that is a plush toy or a bone? So there are no plush toy bones in there, okay? So these are mutually exclusive. So we need to take the probability of the plush toy. So there is 15 items in our box. Plush toys. There's five plush toys. Um, a bone. There is 15 items in our box. And there is a, two bones. We add those together to get seven out of 15. Mutually exclusive. One, when you're looking at this or statement, plush toy or bone, they're both independent of each other. Okay, next one. Determine whether the events are mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive, find the probability. So we have 900 pints of ice cream available. 200 are sugarless, 500 are vanilla, and 500 are sugarless vanilla. What is the probability that it points? Pint selected at random is either sugarless or vanilla. Since they've set out that there is such a thing as sugarless vanilla, okay, these are not mutually exclusive. Okay, so we need to take the probability of a sugarless plus the probability of vanilla and subtract the probability of sugarless vanilla. And now we really want ice cream. Okay, sugarless. There's 900 total pints that we have. How many of them are sugarless? Um, 200 are sugarless plus the probability that something's vanilla. Vanilla. There's 500 out of 900 being vanilla. I need to subtract sugarless vanilla. So of our 900 pints, 50 are sugarless vanilla. Okay, so finding that, we get 650 over 900 and that simplifies to be 13 
over 18, which simplifies to be 0.72 repeating. <clears throat> okay, um, there are your three lesson questions. Please make sure those are submitted on time for me.